He has no invisibility. He's starting to run low on troops. Pops the RC ability. He's got the model still standing. He rages up the road champion and will keep on charging through. He's got the Diggy there. He'll go directly to the town hall. He's got a lot of troops there working. Diggy gets the stun. Predator Trap spins him around, but the Ward is the only troop left here. Ward and take the town hall. The Chasmac Cup is into the playoff. It is the round of 32, and we have a massive matchup. Navi taking on Badzinger. This is going to be a good one, guys. I'm still in the hotel room, still out in California. I'm about to go catch my airplane, and I just need to cover this war and then get it edited and posted, and hopefully I can get it to you the same day that the war happens. That is the goal here, but I guess uh, we'll see if that happens. Hopefully it does. <laughs> Hopefully the hotel Wi-Fi is able to cooperate. But Navi going to be open up here with Gaku. Making his way in with a queen charge to start it off here towards the town hall. The queen is going to take the town hall down. And then he could then go in with the super bowlers after the queen charge is able to get that town hall poison completely out of the way avoid the blast flame flicker doing some great work on the right side it'll eventually run into a mortar out there so don't uh, lose track of it out there and we'll see what happens from here but guys uh the chasmac cup has been on a little bit of a hiatus for a little while because the world championship warm-ups were interrupted and a lot of players had to shift focus for that big tournament but now this uh, tournament is going to be kicking back up into full here as the big $30,000 event is out of the way now. We don't have that interrupting our progress through the players can fully concentrate on this. So he's got double rage towers going off on both sides of the base. So he does get them both engaged at the same time. The queen splits off to the right. She can reach that expo over the wall, but she is not able to get it down. He's got some distraction for the flame flinger, so he was able to get the mortar down without the flame flinger getting targeted. The super pullers keep on charging through, but this raged up multi inferno is wreaking havoc on his healers right now. And so he still has the defensive world champion on the back side of the base. His world champion goes down, and Gaku, while this attack has been a very strong way to approach these bases to have a semi-exposed town hall in a box space where you just charge the town hall and then start in the bullers after the town hall goes down. It honestly is an effective way to take bases down, but it's not going to work on this one here. So Navi is going to be starting off with a miss, open up an early opportunity for Badzinger to get into an early lead. The king will keep on working on the outside of the base here, gather whatever percentage he can, and he's got the phoenix, so he still can pick up a lot around the top of the base here and maybe even duck in and get this air defense as well. So at a minimum, he's climbing it over 80%, but we see these rage towers giving players trouble. And it is not just the like semi-pro scene that's having trouble with it and the the noobs like me. It is even the top players, that player who literally won the world championship, struggling with these rage towers. These bases are absolutely lethal as everybody is building their bases around rage towers and it is very difficult to move through. So this one will keep on racking in percentage into the mid to high 80s as this king just keeps on going. But he'll now go to Phoenix. He's got eight seconds to grab another building or three. I should get three out of it because that pad. The pad will be the last building to go down here. Minion chip away up top. Able to claim one more. 90%. Not bad, honestly. After the unfortunate split where his queen separated from the main pack. So we'll take it and we'll pass it over to Badzinger. Badzinger will start off with Kadeel. Kadeel will be using a queen charge into hybrid to begin their war. Got a siege barracks. I assume the queen will either need to charge the eagle artillery or the town hall. And I'm kind of leaning towards the eagle artillery. I feel like the hybrid, I've seen a lot of people attempt the hybrids against these rage towers with all the multis around them, and it just shreds it. I don't think it is a viable strategy to charge a rage tower. Like, hogs can do it if they charge directly into it with ward ability. But I think the hybrid gets stalled up too much, and usually they have to go with a longer approach and coming from the side rather than just broadsiding directly to the rage tower. So that is an uh, approach that I think is going to be more effective with the queen going in after that area. But it does have a single inferno and these rage towers will boost the damage of the two ground expos, which is obviously going to be very difficult to keep this queen, queen alive through. But he's got plenty of wall breaks. He is not using any to go to the expo here, but maybe he'll use one to go into the sweep for a little bit. What's the plan there? What's the play? Why is he not wall breaking right now? Queen chasing the ice sound for a second, or the 
Other troops are running by, but she continues down the channel. Moves towards the town hall. The hybrid is going to go directly through the Eagle Artillery. So the Queen getting targeted by the Monarch right now. Honestly, this is a one-star risk. Queen goes to ability. He tries the wall break. The wall break was successful to get the Queen out of that area. And over to the town hall, but... He'll have to circle all the way around the monolith here, getting stalled up heavily with his main force as he pushes into the race tower. But the queen does go down. The ground expo eventually able to pick her off. A couple top uh, quarter defenses able to lock onto her, and he's honestly at a very big risk of a one star right now. I don't know how I uh, feel about this right now. If he can get the raw champion, no, he's got the one rage. He doesn't have any freezes. He has no invisibility. He's starting to run low on troops. Pops the RC ability. He's got the model still standing. He rages up the Royal Champion and will keep on charging through. He's got the Diggy there. He'll go directly to the Town Hall. He's got a lot of troops there working. Diggy gets the stun. Predator Trap spins him around. But the Ward is the only troop left here. Ward and take the Town Hall. Take it. There we go. Got it. Okay. Crisis averted. I thought he did a one star. I really did. But he does somehow reach across the face there, barely tags it out. And with that miss, Kazuma gets the defense and Navi takes the lead. I thought for sure that he was going to be charging the Rage Tower area with the Queen directly. But the hybrid going to that area was a massive risk. It doesn't pan out. It is a 74%. Navi will send in Klaus for their second attack here. And we'll see if he can set the tone here for this war. It is a Sui Hero Lalo. He's got the Queen that'll come in on the left side and start to approach the Monolith. A lot of single target heavy defenses around the Defensive King, and Tesla's popping on top of that. He gets a Headhunter down, and the Tesla will burn through the Skeleton significantly faster than he would have liked. And there's one skeleton spell there, so definitely keep an eye on to the Queen as he makes his way forward. He would definitely want to take the Monolith down, but the Tesla's May give him some trouble there. Hit the giant bomb on top of that, so he lost all of his archers. Queen has the unicorn tank the monolith for a moment, and so the queen, oh, she doesn't get it down. And the battle builder is going to repair the monolith right there. It would have been worth the freeze there if he wanted to invest into it, but he almost got it. He almost got it without the freeze. And it was one shot short, and he is going to end up missing that monolith, and we'll see if he can work at the work waste base down from here, but he'll start in at the town hall. He's at a 27% right now. I get another 20 buildings here to get the town hall to activate. Electric Alp not activated. There's everything around the town hall is a two tile gap, so you need a one tile to be able to chain the electric owl. Same as like an e-drag chain, right? And so this town hall will stay unactivated as he makes his way over the top of it. He's quickly gathering up some percentage here. He's got all of his cleanup down nice and early to try to get more percentage. He times the Headhunters and an extra Lava Hound to go in. As the Blues turn back, they will pop that Town Hall. And then, uh, get out of there, get out of there. Okay, Warden Surge is forward. He gets away. The Blues get out of there as well. And going through the Town Hall, turning back to the Town Hall, and then searching away from the the lead edge like that is definitely a stronger way to avoid the blast. So it's a small thing that you don't really think about there, but it is actually a more effective way to take the town hall down. He freezes the monolith. He had to freeze it multiple times. So you can see how much trouble this monolith is going to cause that it could have avoided if the queen could have got it down earlier on. But this dragon run is on its own, and this one is going to end up falling short. He had a very... A uh, solid push here, but that monolith ended up burning up a lot of spells there. I think a, a single freeze to get him through the, with the queen to take that monolith would have saved him a lot in the long run here because he could have then invested the freezes into the top quarter here to maybe shut that air defense down and got the Lalo to continue through without the monolith chipping away and taking out any targets as well. I think if he would have froze that monolith and got the queen through, or the queen could have just got the last strike, that would have tripled. It was that close. I mean... I can talk the talk, but I can't walk the walk. <laughs> That's why I'm on the caster desk, not on, <laughs> not on the on the play field here, right? All right. Well, I'll let Klaus do his thing there. He, he's still I can I can uh, criticize what he did and say what he did wrong, but that doesn't mean I could have done it better. <laughs> here we go. B N will go in for the next one. We have a blimp to go in and land on top of the Eagle Artillery and the Volte Inferno. Yeti blimp. To start off here, also gets the defensive CC pull, gets the funnel form, and he will clear out a decent chunk of the base there. It's enough to set the funnel, 
And I guess it doesn't really matter which way the queen goes here. They also get the rage tower to activate a little bit early, which is potentially beneficial if it uh, still is not reset by the time he gets back to it. But you have to remember that it doesn't have a huge reset timer here, so we will still have to deal with it when she gets in there. It's gonna, I think it's going to be reset, actually. Yeah, you'll put in a baby dragon down the line on the bottom side, so he's definitely banking on his queen, turning off to the left here, and I believe that she will. Yep, all right, clean. He'll push the queen to go into the scatter shot. Nowhere else for her to really go here. He's got one wall breaker, and I feel like he needs to wall break at the air defense here. I don't know that the queen will path in turtle enough here, and he needs to get the super bowlers in as well, so... Just using the blimp to set a funnel, get the eagle artillery out of the way nice and early, and then have everybody move in together. Claps in the corner here, very, very clean funnel. It is a long push across the base here to the town hall, and even further to wrap all the way through and go up to the top scatter shot. But uh, Super Bowlers are fully capable, and they are good against these box bases. One of the better attacks, I, I think uh, it's always a toss up between them and the Electric Titans. But when the base is a little bit more closed off, like this pop of is going to be, then the Super Bowlers are going to outperform the Electric Titans. And that's, I think, the play here. But he gets the Town Hall down the Super Bowlers, and just glance that Town Hall and try to turn off to the left. And if they can get out of that Town Hall Poison, he's in a pretty good spot. He pops the Queen Ability. The Queen Ability is not able to take the Defensive Road Champion down. He ended up dying through her ability. The Scatter Shot got some damage. The Scatter Shot was Rage, so he was able to take even an uh, indirect shot there and turn it into a lethal blow. But he pushes his way into the Defensive Road Champion. Now he's got that Headhunter that arrives, and he had the invisibility that protected this Road Champion and the Headhunter. He put the Rage of his own and pops out RC ability. The RC ability is itself is not boosted by the Rage, but at least it gets him through that scatter shot. And if he get this Expo down, he can definitely still triple this with his other troops. Or champion taking a beating there from that expo though and now the warden will very likely follow the target of the king but wait the warden okay, okay warden all right he, he was trying to cooperate for a second but now he's gonna get distracted by whatever the king is doing up top he wants to go play with his buddy and it is gonna leave that expo standing but like the witch ends up breaking the wall with all the skeletons they step into the expo we clear the top corner six seconds to go it's very close but it is not enough he will get a very high percentage, but the miss for Badzinger. And with that miss, the war is tied with how much of a split? We're looking at a six building split into Navi's favor. Bernal live for Navi. Sending in a blimp to go after the single Perno and not necessarily the town hall. In fact, he he can put in some goblins with it. Are the goblins able to secure the town hall? Did he mix in goblins and the yetis there? He made the goblins invisible and they were under the rage. They were able to secure the town hall, but somehow the yetis did not get the inferno down. I love the mix there. But you had to get the inferno more than you had to get the town hall. Obviously, the town hall is a huge pickup. I mean, I'm not going to say that it's not, but uh, interesting mix there because he had the opportunity to take both. And now we'll see what this queen can do here. She's gonna get away from the single though. Obviously causes some problems. He's managing it well though. He puts in a couple balloons. They end up hitting the race that he has active, but Sweeper knocks it back. The poison tower is wreaking havoc on them. The other poison tower is gonna protect as well. He's gonna get the queen away from the single. She doesn't have her ability anymore though. She's hanging on by a thread. She's taking eagle artillery strikes. But wait, one of the eagle artillery strikes there went to something else and didn't hit the queen. So he ends up surviving. The healers are covered by the ward ability. I don't know why he's using the ward with the queen charge, but I guess if the attack is going off the rails and you had to find a way to protect the queen charge, it's better to... Okay, maybe not. He put that ward on the ground, though. The warden will go follow the king. The healers switch over to the king as well. Air defense is going to chip these healers off, and he will send in the world champion up the top here. So it is definitely not going Bernal's way right now. Everything stemming from that blimp missing that single inferno. They pop the king ability and surge across the top of the base there. The warden ends up taking the healers as the king surges away from them. Get the multi-inferno down, then he may be able to pull this back a little bit. They were a champion, doing some good work there. She's gonna potentially go in towards the model. She does, but she's also out of steam, so 
He's gathering whatever percentage he can here, making sure he picks off these Trevor Arch Towers and frees up as much of the trash in the outside of uh, the base as possible. And obviously, this is not going through. So, yeah, definitely a cool plan. Honestly, I, I like the idea. But you need that blimp to secure the single inferno. It was the primary target. Even more so than the town hall. Like, the town hall was just icing on the cake if you got those, uh, those those sneaky goblins to go in there and take it but we see they had 10 sneaky goblins and one yeti and he landed almost directly on top of it but it maybe he fell a little bit short of where he needed to land i think he needed to land almost more directly on top of the mon or on top of the single inferno rather than back where he did because falling short with one yeti just didn't cut it so nice try Bernal, but that definitely is going to give an opportunity for bad to get in the lead now they missed a chance to take the lead on the last one. They missed a chance to take the lead on the first one. But we'll see if Achilles can get in the midpoint of the war here and get Badzinger into the lead. He's going to be diving in a Yeti Bomb on the right side of the base. And I assume he wants to land it inside this shock compartment, right? Is that the right play? Is that where he wanted to land? I mean, I guess we'll see. Queen needs to take the turn to the multi inferno here. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about how this is pathing right now, but he definitely needs, I think, the Royal Champion to go in and handle these, but he still has the defensive CC. So, what's the play here? What's the play? <laughs> He's gonna run into some problems. Okay, invisibility is the play. He gets the Queen to correct path, she goes into the multi inferno. If he can now wall break across into the scatter shot, then he can take advantage of where the Yeti blimp was in. He sends in a wall breaker, targets the right wall, but it got sniped off by the defensive warden. So he's got one more wall breaker. He'll throw it in now, and it goes to the inside path. It goes all the way in, and it transitions the queen off to the left side. So the CC is not pulled yet. The queen... Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Bad Singer with another mistake cascading into what looks like it's going to end up in the defense. He did get the CC pull, though. So I guess the Roar Champion could have gone after that scatter shot regardless. And she will. But he needs to get the Lala through the Town Hall. It's not a huge uh, path to get through here, but he does have two sweepers that would be knocking him back while he tries to take the Town Hall down. He's got the Ward ability that can pop now, but the Invisibility Tower is right there. Able to secure it before the Invisibility Tower goes off, and he'll end up uh, popping that Ward ability, but uh, a couple of balloons get missed. He does get out of the poison, so he's still okay there, but the chances that he can get through without the Queen Charge still working up the top of the base here is very, very minimal, and the balloons are quickly getting shut down down south. Definitely need that Queen Charge to move a lot further than she did. If she did, then she would have been able to support the Roar Champion. Roar Champion maybe could have got a lot more value and then supported the Lalo as they came in. And at that point, with the Town Hall still standing and everything going wrong, you just had to go in there and take it down. So this one is a very low percent. A lot of things went wrong in that attack there. I don't know if that blimp was on its proper target. I feel like it was supposed to land on the inside corner of the scatter shot compartment and then surge into that compartment where you don't generally want to go out to the center of the compartment with the blimp because that's going to be more likely to be blimp a lot of people will like to like try to skirt to the side and land in the corner of the compartment and then spread into that compartment to try to avoid the black air bombs that would potentially be stopping that drop and it didn't work a lot of things went wrong 63 percent navi will maintain their lead here as this war is fully defensive Navi will be sending in Kazuma. They have been given an opportunity that I didn't expect. I thought if you're going to end up with a lot of early mistakes here and give Badzinger that many opportunities, they would have been able to take advantage of it. But I'm honestly just as surprised that Badzinger was able to hold off Navi as well as they have. This uh, attack starts off with the Queen Charge, but the Queen immediately goes to Ability. A bit of a missed timing on spells there. Not able to keep that queen alive. He has to burn a freeze onto the headhunters now. Otherwise, he would lose the queen. She's about to engage the defensive king, but he has more headhunters coming out. He does lock onto that. Okay, he gets that headhunter down. The queen will now have a chance to recover. I was worried that he was uh, going to die right there, but without a queen ability, 
to give him a backup layer of protection, then this queen is quite vulnerable right now. But like the archer coming down to help grab the lava puffs. Poison catches most of them, and the queen will still have a couple running around that was chasing the king up top. A wizard comes down up there and will handle those while the king is under phoenix, so that works out great. Queen will make her way forward here, but he got the eagle artillery down early. We saw in that last attack, once again, the eagle artillery killed the queen's healers, and this eagle artillery is causing a lot of problems. He does go invisible with the queen, but that ends up transferring this expo over to the flame flinger, so a little bit of a mistake there when a freeze probably would have been better. The expo does go down now, but not before it claims the scatter shot, or prevented him from getting the scatter shot with the with his uh this uh, flame flinger there. He'll get into it now. The rage tower goes off as he pushes his way towards the town hall. Uh, secure the town hall takedown. Freeze it up here as he continues to push his way across. He's got a lot of those going to the model. A couple of red air bombs are right there trying to stop him from securing it, but he already burned the ward ability way earlier, so all the balloons that we're going towards the town hall, just got absolutely wrecked by the blast. There's not a lot of blues left here, but the champion is still moving strong. The queen is taking the scatter shot, and the queen will survive. Okay, okay, Kazuma. You kept this queen charge alive all the way through. He's got a couple of defense left on the backside, but he's got balloons on standby, and he can go in here and snipe off these arch towers. He just needs to get this air defense out of the way. The queen will lock onto it in just a moment, and now he can throw in the last of the balloons here and snipe off these arch towers and get the cleanup moving. So that is a huge pickup right here. Kazuma might have just saved this war for Navi as we see our first triple on the fourth attack, and that is absolutely clear. Blood. And the last attacker for Navi to follow it up is their star player. One of the top players in the world. In fact, I would say he is the best player in the world. Stars will close. And that is a strong closer when you have the lead. Dima will be sending in a Super Archer Blimp. Early warded ability. Early use of the warden to pick a blimp so we can sail all the way in. Freezes up the poison tower so we can get the... Super Archer's down without the Poison Tower throwing at it. Get them invisible so it has no target. And that does delay the Poison Tower, so he is able to get in. And he will likely secure the Town Hall and a lot of their big targets in the area. I really like that he throws that Poison Tower. That is cheaper than a heal spell to try to just heal through the Poison. But the Super Archers are still chipping away in there. They're running out of invis invisibility. And Town Hall is not down. Okay, that's a bit of a problem. I don't like when the Town Hall doesn't go down when you use a Super Archer attack, and that is going to be a difficult obstacle to overcome here, so definitely needs to secure the Town Hall without investing too much into it. That's a tough call right now. He puts in an Electric Titan in from the left side here to work with the Queen, so regardless of what uh, defensive CC was right there, the Electric Titan will help him burn through it very quickly. Baby Dragon and a Balloon go pick up the Arch Tower on the right side. Baby Dragon tanks. Balloon goes in there to advantage the tanking. And they work together there to not only finish the funnel, but also clear out the Arch Tower. Very perfectly efficient funnel right there. Now the Queen will make her way in. King will try to cut off her pathing. I'd like to see the King stay to the outside. I want to see the King stay to the outside. And I want to see the Queen take the turn into the base. He drops in a couple of Blues down the line. They're going to give not only a little extra firepower, but also they're providing some tanking in front of the king and bolstering his life pool. He pops the queen ability, he will secure right there. The king did a good job. The king has a phoenix, so we should have power through the rest of the test farm. If he can go so far as picking up that air defense, that would be even better. But the queen able to survive after taking town hall, picks up a little bit further past that, and the Lalo will search in through the eagle artillery. Remember the Lalo has no spell support. He used up all of his spells there, and he used up the Warden on the first phase of the pack there, so he does not have any support. He's trying to get the Eagle Artillery down, but the Warden shipped away the Blues there, and they are able to be taken out there by the Warden, so that Eagle Artillery will defend. He drops in the Royal Champion, all the Headhunters to go after the defense of the Royal Champion. She stops him up and removes a lot of value of the Royal Champion, so she's in a Mystic Scatter Shot as well. And now Badzinger is in a tough spot. That is a huge development in this war here. I mean, Badzinger was already behind a little bit, a little bit, not much. They were behind a little bit on percentage, but this is going to solidify the lead here for Navi. Stars will be using a Zap into Lalo. In Legend League, he uses the Blizzard Lalo. And with a area packed with a lot of defenses over here, like landing a blimp and doing a blizzard 
on top of the rage tower is usually a good uh, amount of value here but you know it's going to be trapped up and the air defenses are on the wide outside here so it'd be difficult to get any troops in or get a blimp in to actually secure this area and land in there without a massive investment so he's not going to take that he'll just use some lightning to out the area get the rage tower triggered nice and early and he will go ahead and send in the heroes from the left side. Queen is going to make her way towards the Eagle Artillery and the scatter shot, while the King is going to get out in front of her. A little bit of a funnel, or he basically just self-funnels there, and he should stay off and stay with the Queen. He's going to get pushed right into the channel there, while the Queen may end up going to this north or, ch or this more north channel and going more directly into the Eagle Artillery. But he throws in the Log Launcher, and so he's not going to have a backup method to secure the Town Hall if something goes wrong over there. So definitely going to have to Lalo through the Town Hall. He has the Log Launcher going to be able to easily snipe off this Multi-Inferno and get the Sweeper there as well. I like the value out of that. And on top of that, it's going to trigger that poison or that Invisibility Tower early, which is going to have the help. Or it's going to give a lot of support here for the Lalo as they start to go in through the Town Hall. And make sure he doesn't have to burn an extra freeze to lock up the Invisibility Tower when he actually strikes the Town Hall with the blue. So that's a spell investment there, that is, or a, a, a way to save spells, I guess we should say. But he'll push his way into that Eagle Artillery of the Queen. She started to uh, chase some lava hooks there for just a moment, but she takes her back, and he wills to the Town Hall with the balloons. Doesn't have to invest a freeze, a second freeze. So you still have to invest a freeze onto the approach, but you don't have to invest a second freeze when you actually take the Town Hall down because of that log launcher. So smart play there, able to get the defensive Queen out of the way here, but there's not a lot of blues left. He's got uh, three blues still on standby, and the Hound Pop and a Pop. Monastay standing in the middle of the base here, and he will trim out the buildings around the edge of the base. He's definitely got enough for the win already, but can he still triple this? Monastay's getting completely locked down by all the Lava Pups that are moving through the middle there. Giving the Warden plenty of support, so he will get that Monolith down. There's not a lot of blues left, but the Warden can outrange the remainder of the defense on the base. And he even threw down a Giant. I don't know where that Giant came from. I don't care. It's going... Ah, oh, the Warden goes down. Okay. <laughs> well, the Warden can't solo the rest of the base and outrange the defenses if he gets taken out by traps. So, luckily, they don't need a three-star here. To lock in the win. A two star is sufficient. Navi will survive in the Chazmat Cup. A low scoring war. Very defensive. But these defenses are strong and their base builders are absolutely insane. So 11 stars is enough to carry Navi to victory. We got one more attack here. So let's see what Bad Singer has to close it out. And we'll see if they had any chance in the first place. ND live for Bad Singer. We have a zap into Lalo as well. Can he outperform stars? Now is the question. Can he at least get his team up to 11 stars? Can he put the first one on the board after the pressure has been removed, of course, and the win is out of reach? But we'll see if he can make it happen here with the lightning, taking out the core buildings, taking out the monolith, grabbing out that inferno, and that'll leave up only single inferno for the rest of the base here. No rage towers. He's got a poison tower up by the eagle artillery, an invisibility tower by the town hall, and ground expos surrounding the town hall area. So he'll just avoid the ground expos around the town hall and charge the ground expos around the eagle artillery. But conveniently, he only has to fight one at a time because there's a spread. And so he's not going to have a sustained large amount of damage on him. However, the scatter shot doesn't have some access, and so he's just going to walk on by it. And this uh, Royal Champion is right there to potentially grab it out there. She has to power through the defensive CC. But Diggy gets over there and gets a stun onto it. Diggy gets distracted for just a moment. Or is Diggy actually attacking the scatter shot? He doesn't get the scatter shot down. His Royal Champion does not survive. And now the Queen is getting overwhelmed by the defensive King and all these lava buffs. And that means that is going to be the end of the road for her. She'll claim the Eagle Artillery before she goes down. We're going to start the Lalo in through the town hall. One balloon gets inside the memory range of the scatter shot and is able to take it down. But everybody else will go right through the town hall here and is there any chance he can still recover this? The queen gets through the defensive keying up at the top there and will get the eagle artillery down. It will get a strike into the air but that strike is an uh, income right as it actually missed. That uh, eagle artillery strike missed. <laughs> I don't know how it missed. It's supposed to be homing, right? But it does get him through the town hall there. He's got that invisibility that uh, goes off on defense, but doesn't cause any problem. Now, his wounds are very, very clumped up, and he needs to freeze the scatter shot right here. He gets away from it. Okay, freeze it now. 
freeze it? Okay. <laughs> a little slow on that freeze, I feel like, but the defensive road champion is the biggest threat on the back side of the base here. If he gets the road champion now without losing too many blues here, then he can definitely get this. He's got that Inferno baby dragon that comes out of his slammer and supports with a dragon right there, right there, and that was enough to get the defensive road champion down. And it does look like ND will get the triple, but it is too little too late. So slow on this war to pick up their first triple. Wait until the end, but ND delivers, and unfortunately, it's not enough. It is a percentage advantage for Navi, and Navi still will advance, but you gotta hand it to him. A strong finish here for Badzinger, and at least they match the score of Navi and get us up to 11 stars. So, Navi advances in the Chazmat Cup, and we will definitely see them later on. Thanks for watching.